Hello everyone! This video is on 10 essential behaviors to begin training your puppy in the first week that you bring your puppy home. Now, I do have a video called What to Train First, and it really goes over the concept of when you get your puppy, that's when you decide what you're going to focus on because a lot of puppies will come with a specific issue that needs addressing first. So I'm gonna give you this list of 10 things to work on, but maybe you have a very mouthy puppy and I would say to work on that first alongside with these other behaviors, but make sure you're working on that daily so you might forget about um, teaching your puppy to go in his pen and you're focusing on the mouthing and biting problem that you're having. With my latest puppy, Epic, what I focused on the most in the first week was separation training, but perhaps maybe you bring home a puppy that's very barky and barks a lot. That might be something that goes uh, priority on your list, especially if you lived in an apartment, to work on that behavior at least one time a day. So you might have to put other stuff on the back burner so you can focus on those issues. Another thing to consider is proactive training for breed specific tendencies. So for example, if you had a herding breed puppy, you might want to teach them from day one to be calm and ignore fast movements such as children playing or bicycles, skateboards and joggers if you live on a busy street and, or cars and they start herding those things. I would say from day one you want to start working on that. Or another example is giant breeds. If they're going to be enormous and with a lot of strength, you might want to work on first, uh, in the first week, teaching them not to jump up on people and working on them ignoring food on counters, as well as uh, walking on a loose leash. Those are three things that you would focus on with a giant breed, but you might not need to focus on that for a few weeks with a, say for example, like a little teeny teeny dog. Now for what I believe to be the 10 most essential behaviors to train your puppy in the first week. Now these are not in any specific order as depending on your puppy's issues, you might work on one before the other. Conveniently, I have a tutorial on each of these 10 essential behaviors and I'll link the video tutorials in the description below. And remember, you're not going to teach all of the behaviors perfectly in the first seven days that you get your puppy. You're beginning the training for each of these 10 behaviors. So number one is teaching your puppy to play with his toys and reinforce your puppy playing with his toys as well as chewing on his chews. So you want to have your puppy loose in your living room uh, and you're really reinforcing those appropriate choices of what to do when you're loose, what to choose to chew on and what to play with. Because um, if you say have your puppy managed in a pen um, because you're so busy and you never really get to the point where you're really reinforcing what you do want the puppy to chew on when they're loose in your living room, for example, they're going to want to chew on everything, especially if they're pen in their pen they're allowed to chew on everything. So you really want to reinforce what they, what they should be chewing on. I suggest having some cool toys around that you interact with often that the puppy likes and then get your puppy to play with those toys and interact with those toys when he's feeling like checking things out in the environment with his mouth or chewing on things. When you first bring your puppy home, you want to really create a reinforcement history for playing with his toys right from the start. Don't just leave the toys out and hope he'll choose those over your socks and shoes, or better yet, pick up your socks and shoes so your puppy is more likely to spend the day playing with his toys that you want him to play with rather than your stuff. Number two, playing the attention game and teaching an attention noise. The attention game is going to help you build your dog's interest in wanting to be with you when in your house and when out and about. And the attention noise is a great way to get your puppy's attention so you can then ask your puppy to do something else. And you can also use it to interrupt undesirable behavior. So for example, if they go to chew on your couch, you can use your attention noise and I like to use a kissy noise and you can interrupt the puppy from going and chewing on whatever it is that you don't want them to mess with. In these next two examples, I'm going to show how I use the attention noise to interrupt undesirable behavior in puppies. This little man is chewing on the couch and I'm going to use the attention noise 
to interrupt him and then redirect him to chewing on his dog bone again. I find it extremely important to caution clients to build the strength of the interrupter noise in training sessions using high-value reinforcers, but then when in a real-life situation like the puppy chewing on the couch or on a shoe, you're going to use your kissy noise to get your puppy's attention and then you can redirect them to something that already exists in the environment like their chew bone, so you're not just giving a high-level reinforcement every time the dog goes over to try and chew on the couch because that could inadvertently teach the dog to go and chew on whatever it is to get you to give them a treat. Number three, the recall. Not only is this going to also build your relationship with your puppy, but it is another way that you can interrupt your puppy's behavior if they're doing something that you don't like. And it's a great emergency behavior if your puppy goes off somewhere and you need to call them back. Number four, reinforcing your puppy for walking at your side. This is going to greatly help your leash walking training if you've already reinforced the position you want your puppy to be in at your side while standing still and taking steps forward. Number five, harness and leash games. Teaching your puppy to be comfortable having the harness put on and taken off and having the leash dangling from their body without thinking to bite at it as well as the beginning of walking on a leash. Six, teaching your puppy a calm settle. Not only will this be beneficial for teaching your puppy to be calm when food is around, say if you're having a party or there's food on the table or you're having dinner, but this is also extremely helpful for teaching duration behaviors like a down stay because what's happening is the puppy is getting used to not getting a treat every single second while they're in a training session. They start to relax and realize that the food is going to come to them just for staying where they are. So that is extreme. I like to train the settle first before working on a down stay. Number seven, teaching your puppy to go in a pen or a crate as the beginning of separation training. Now, in no way do I expect a puppy to learn all these 10 behaviors in the first week. You're simply beginning these behaviors in the first week. So you're not gonna have the final finished results of all of these. They're the beginning of a work in progress. So for example, for the go in your crate or go in your pen, maybe in the first week you only get to the step where um, they're offering going in on their own or staying in there for a few seconds or possibly thinking to lay down, but you might not even get to the point where the puppy thinks to lay down when in there. And that subtle behavior is really gonna help with that. Number eight, follow a treat lure calmly and take treats nicely. Now, if your puppy takes treats super hard, that might be the first thing that you wanna work on with your puppy. Or for example, if you're playing attention games and stuff like that, you can be putting the food on the floor so that you can avoid um, having your hands nibbled during that training. But for other behaviors, like feeding your puppy a treat for different things, you wanna work on taking treats nicely. Um, I also suggest that you teach luring as a behavior because what can happen is the puppy can get frustrated if they're just trying to get the treat out of your hand because they think you're giving them the treat and that's gonna interfere with your training and it might set it off to, uh, to be where the puppy is um, frustrated immediately in training because they don't know what's going on. So really building that clarity to the fact that the luring is teaching them some new behavior. So once your puppy can follow a lure calmly and for a little bit of duration, then you can start working on those behaviors that you really wanna get, such as teaching a sit or a down or teaching them to do very uh, fun tricks or something like that. Number nine, teaching your puppy not to bite your hands, your hair, your clothing, or bite at your feet when you're moving around. Now, this is going to take some training if you have a puppy that, has, that really likes doing this. You might have a puppy that doesn't even think to mouth on you. Um, but if you do have a puppy that's very mouthy and they're, you know, they keep putting things in their mouth and they keep putting you in their mouth, it's not going to quickly, magically disappear after one training session. You need to work on training them what you do want them to do and managing them in between, making sure they don't rehearse those undesirable behaviors. Basically, what you're going to be doing is reinforcing your puppy for the absence of the behavior that you don't like 
in the presence of the stimuli that tend to make it happen. So for example, uh, if there is some shuffling feet going by or a sweater dangling in their face, or perhaps they like to bite hands that come towards their face, you're using counter conditioning where you're reinforcing that these things are nice things and to stay calm when these happen, but you're also reinforcing the puppy for doing nothing. So they're getting a treat, when these things happen for sitting, standing, or laying calmly and just ignoring these distractions and understanding that we're brushing them rather than uh, there's this weird object that we're poking them with. So um, it's a great way to build your dog's trust as well in you and also uh, make it so that when you interact with your dog, you're not arousing them the whole time where they think that it's like a game of play where they should be biting your arms which could seem fun when you have a tiny puppy, but as an adult dog, it can be uh, very inappropriate if you have a guest over and they just wanna bite their arms or bite their feet. Number 10, teaching your puppy to drop a chew stick. This is a great exercise to play as soon as you get your puppy to teach them that they don't need to run away from you if they have something, as well as not to guard it, uh, that you're not gonna just take away what they have and that they need to worry about that. So it's the beginning steps to teaching a leave it, teaching your puppy to drop it, and also feeling safe when you come and take something that they have. And it all begins with you holding the object, letting your puppy chew on it, and then presenting them with a high value treat so they want to drop it. So you're building uh, right from the start when you get your puppy that they want to drop things for you and that it's highly reinforcing. Where if you wait to work on this exercise, what can happen is the puppy's gonna have stuff in their mouth, sticks outside, trash, um, things that they shouldn't eat, things that you highly value, and you're gonna try and get it out of their mouth and they're gonna find out from day one, oh my gosh, it's so punishing when that person comes over and takes whatever it is out of my mouth um, because they remove the good thing that I had, which is technically punishment. So they're gonna be less likely to let you take things out of their mouth and try to run away with them. It's not because they're uh, being stubborn or disobedient, it's just that uh, beha the behaviors that they're learning is to avoid things that are punishing, which is you coming to take what they have. It's important to remember that you're just beginning the training of these 10 behaviors. Don't feel overwhelmed. 10 behaviors isn't that much because one thing that you can do is every day you could select five different behaviors to work on and then switch them up over the seven, you know, seven days of the week. So perhaps on the first day, you might play the attention game and then you work on settle and then you work on uh, following a lure, a treat lure. And that's only gonna be perhaps 30 seconds that you work with your dog on, on following a treat lure. So if you are, you know, you don't have very much time to work with your dog, you can do five minutes a day and just make sure to work on different behaviors uh, in, in the training session or do three really short training sessions like a one minute uh, spread throughout the day. But um, it really depends on your puppy as to how long, how much training they can do in a day, especially if you have a teeny tiny dog that can't take very much food. So you might even do less training with a dog like that just because um, even with tiny treats, they can't do as much as say a huge Great Dane that can take in a lot of food. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support my work, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. You can also become a supporting member of channel Kiko Pup by clicking the join button. See you later.